XRP was the undisputed champion of the previous bull run. It had an absolutely astounding 62,182% run in the span of about a year. Even more impressive is that a majority of the increase happened in a span of only 26 days. This coin has absolutely massive explosive potential. So it's no surprise that whenever I asked on Discord today, which coin did you guys want me to review? The number one pick was XRP. So let's jump right into it. Now, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you, uh, explain to you guys in detail, and you guys can follow along with your own charts. I'm going to start with a brand new fresh chart, and I'm going to list out all of the major levels that you need to be watching so you can keep up with this coin yourself. So this is designed as like a b basic beginner sort of introduction video to trading, and I'm going to lay out exactly why I'm listing certain levels and why they're important and also what you should be doing if we get to these levels. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So XRP USD, I'm using the Bitstamp chart because it has the most price history on this one. Now I know there's been some, uh, a lot of craziness with the SEC and all of that. However, I don't care guys, because my trading style only focuses on the, the charts themselves and I completely ignore the, the uh, whatever news or fundamental things are going on and just watching the charts keeps me unbiased so that I can look at a chart and know whether or not it's bullish or bearish so what we're going to do is we have the US dollar pairing and we also have the Bitcoin pairing and on the Bitcoin pairing is going to be on Bitstamp now we'll go back to that later so what you want to do is you want to zoom out this chart as far back as possible so you get an overall idea of what's going on now as far back as I want to go in this chart will be the 12 month range. This is the yearly chart. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to list out these levels uh, because they are going to have a lot of significance in the future. So this is going to be our 2021 yearly open. And I'm going to go slow so you guys can all follow along. All right. This is intentional. This is going to be our 2020 yearly open. I'm not going to do the uh, I'm not going to do every month by any means, but I think that these are very important levels to annotate. So don't miss this level 2019 yearly open. Well, the reason why I'm annotating all the yearly opens is because they are very um, important levels that do get interact with quite a bit. And this is the one that I think is going to have the most significance coming out very soon is a 2018 yearly open. All right. And that should be sufficient. Now, uh, anything to notice on this chart um not too much honestly there's really not much we can get from this chart so we're going to go ahead and go to a lower chart which will be our quarterly chart the three month chart oh uh, on this chart i do want to annotate the last quarter the quarterly open and that is all i'm gonna do can i nope can't change it quarterly haha <laughs> it's funny quarterly open all right, fantastic. Anything else in this chart? Well, one thing that I am starting to look at is look at the overall look at the overall price action and the volume profile. So what is going on with the volume? Well, the volume is actually increasing on this increase. See this? How we have a gradual increase in volume as we go up. This is really, really good. And we still have a ton of time before this candle uh, this candle closes. So I like the overall gradual increase. Let's go to a monthly, see if we can see it better. Um, a little bit, not too much, but uh, yeah, overall, let's go to over here and take the August open. And I'm going to put a ton of stuff on this chart. Okay. And it's going to look very, very uh, compact. However, whenever you zoom in, you'll be able to see these high time frame levels um, on the lower time frame charts. And this makes sure you're not missing these major things that are actually really, really important. Now on the monthly level, now we're going to start talking about what I call breakers and breakers are levels where there is a lot of uh, a fight between the bulls and the bears. They get them as two teams going back at it. So the bears were fighting back really hard. They fought, 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 pushed the bulls all the way down. But this is the area where the bulls fought back, right? Ultimately, the bulls lost. However, this is the area where they really gave it one heck of a shot. So this is going to be what I call a breaker or a break in the price action. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to, I'm going to call it a monthly breaker. And I'm going to list the entire chart. 
from the, uh, the, the entire candle body, not the wicks, just the body. Now we have another one right here. Why? It goes down. We have a fight back, continuation down. So there's another monthly breaker as well. And it's going to overlap, and that's totally fine, guys. What that overlap means, we have additional confluence with the chart that this is a very important level. Monthly breaker. All right, fantastic. So any other monthly breaker? Yep, here's one right here. And I think that is all I want to list on this chart. So like I was saying, guys, I want to see this have more volume profile, like the volume profile, I want it to have more aggressive on the increase. And you guys can see we did have higher volume on this increase relative to the decrease, which is a good sign. But I really, really, really want to start seeing some volume come in on here. Um, so, yeah, overall, not too bad. I do like how we have an increase in volume as a whole on the expansion to the upside. This is a healthy looking overall volume profile. Now, if you look at this, like I told you guys, these levels are very significant, right? I drew the 2018 yearly open. And if you zoom over here, look, where do we find resistance at? 2018 yearly open. Wow, that's pretty interesting, huh? Exactly, guys, I'm telling you, these, these levels are very, very important. You need to remember where these things are at. Now let's go to the weekly chart. So on the weekly chart, we do the exact same thing. Where are our major levels that are gonna act as a lot of support or resistance? Well, this is one right here. Okay, the weekly breaker. And maybe do I like that? I'm gonna go ahead and ignore it. And the reason why we have so much price action that happened in between it, I'm gonna ignore it. But uh, generally I would include that, but I'm not going to on this one. However, comma, over here, we have a very clean breaker. And the reason why I think this is so, such a significant level is look at the interaction that we've had on this one. So we had this breaker established, right? Right one. Yeah. Okay. This is the one we're looking for. So we have a downward, a downward movement, a consolidation upwards, a continuation down. This localizes that breaker point. So once we lost it, we came back up here and retapped it. This confirms it as a major resistance level. This want to see. So came back down here, all the way over, all the way over, all the way over. Got back into it went back above the level, and then what do we come back into? Our weekly breaker. Once again, it acted as a major support level, came back down, acted as a support level, and now we're back above. So because we're back above this level, what should it act as? A major support. So if we do come in here, that should be a major support level if we do get another retest. So if the price comes down and hits the around a dollar region, like dollar ninety-eight region, That'd be amazing, amazing buy opportunity, and I would absolutely take that bet. Now, um, I'm not a financial advisor, so like all my videos, I cannot give you financial advice. All I'm doing is telling you what I would do in, in, in my situation. These are the opportunities I will be taking advantage of. So I think that's about all we've got on this one. Okay, fantastic. Let's go to the three-day. This is a very significant level. I like this a lot actually okay and you can see why this is a three-day level i know it gets really complicated when you're, when you're building these things but they do make sense when you zoom into the lower time frame all right three-day breaker now let's look at the interaction we've had on this okay this was a increase in price consolidation in price continuation in price comes down here halves it goes back above it loses a three-day level comes over here and then it acts as a major resistance level. You see that? How one tap, two tap, three tap can't get back above it. Why? Because this is a major level. It acts as support and now it acts as resistance. So all really, really harshly down to the downside, come back up and what are we retesting? That three day breaker guys, very interesting, right? So right now, as of today, we've had a, we've had a successful retest of this major day breaker this is what we want to see for a continuation of the upside now what are the levels do we have up here honestly not much i don't really see anything else up here i really think is very significant um over here what do we have Ooh, i've got something uh we do have this level as a daily and i think i'm going to annotate it because it does make a lot of sense and the reason why i like it so much is because zoom in you guys can see this 
come up here, we had one tap of it, two tap of it, three tap of it, four tap of it, got above the level, and now we're clearly inside of that daily breaker, right? So it's still acting as a major support level. And the last level on here that I'm going to annotate right here. Now, the reason why this is such a significant level is called a point of breakdown. Actually, let me do one more. Let's go to the fourth. I have a better piece. I can I localize it more. Can I pinpoint accuracy? I can. Let me get rid of that. This is my actual more precision level for the four hour chart. This is going to be the four hour point of breakdown. And I hope you guys are really paying attention to annotate these in your charts. They're going to have a lot of significance come soon, okay? So make sure to pause it, rewind it, whatever you got to do, and make sure you have all these annotated on your chart. So four-hour point of breakdown. Now, why is that significant? Because this is the last up candle. This is the last fight back that the bulls had before massive collapse. You guys see that? This is the last point where they really gave it a shot before the old thing just utterly failed, okay? So since it was such a major level of resistance on the way down, you would imagine it to also be a major level of resistance on the way up because this was a support level that we lost it and now it's becoming a resistance when we come back into it. So if slash when we come back up here and test it, I would imagine this level, the 155 to 159 level, to act as our first major level of resistance. Oh, I hope that makes sense to you guys. Um, outside of that, I think we basically hit everything pretty well. Now, one thing we want to take notice of, we're back on the weekly chart, is you always want to understand where our major uh, our major uh, moving averages are, okay? And the only one that I care about is going to be the 200 moving average, 200 moving average. So right now I'm on the weekly chart, and I want to take notice of where is the weekly 200 moving average. Well, as you guys can see, this has actually acted as a very major support and resistance on the spin of this coin. You guys can see it comes down here, taps it, loses it, taps it, taps it, taps it, almost taps it, not all the way, gets above it, plays around a little bit, but then we come back up here and we tap it once, tap it twice, and now we've accelerated the upside, right? So the 200 weekly has acted as a pretty major support resistance level. Um, now on the daily level, once again, this is the daily 200 moving average. And this one has even more significance than the previous one because this is the one that really accelerated us to the upside right here. You guys can see how. Um, let's go back a little further out. Let's look at the interaction this chart has had. So over here, lost it. We stay below it, stay below it. Got on top of it, but lost it again. Tapped it, tapped it. A little bit of a bull trap though. Tapped it, tapped it, got above it, right? Held above it. And then what happened? Accelerated the upside. Why did we accelerate upward? Because we finally reclaimed the daily 200 moving average. Okay. And these 200 moving averages is very, very significant. Well, zoom over here. I've been I've been talking about this on Twitter lately. How the 200 moving average has been like the bane of our existence. Because right over here, you guys can see, drop beneath it, tapped it, tapped it, tapped it, tapped it, tapped it got above it, back below it, and now we have just now accelerated from it and had a tremendous amount of growth. The 200 moving average is a chart, is, is, an, uh, is a level you need to make sure you're fully aware of. Now we also have what's called a golden crossover, okay? A golden crossover, and this is a very important sign for a lot of institutional investors. That's whatever the 50, move, uh, 50 exponential moving average crosses above the 200 moving average. What that means is we are in a long-term uh, bull market. That's a sign that, that a lot of institutional traders now try to get into the market because it is a confirmed bull market on this coin. So this golden crossover just happened, which is a really, really, really good sign. Um, we really do want to see this. So, um, overall, I think we've laid out everything we're looking for on Bitcoin. I know it looks really crazy, but I promise you guys, zoom in and start really looking at these charts. It all makes sense a tremendous amount of sense and the interaction you'll see on these things is going to be absolutely amazing. So you guys can see we tapped this level, got above this level, retapped it, right? All these uh, yearly open, see how well it got interacted with right here, just tapped it. 
guys can see it does make a significant difference whenever you're looking for levels to buy and sell. Now, this is the US dollar chart. I think I've hit this one really clearly. I think you guys now have an understanding of what's going on in the entire market. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to the Bitcoin pairing. Okay, and on the Bitcoin pairing, we're gonna do the exact same thing. Go clearly. You guys should be good at this by now. We've done it once. We're gonna do it one more time. Okay, we're gonna go through and do it once again. So here, this is gonna be the 21 open. I can't type today. Be the 2020 open. We're going to have open. And of course, we have the 18 open. All right, significant levels. So now let's go ahead and go to our monthly level. Now the monthly, you guys can see this chart looks a lot different than the previous one. And that's because we're on the Bitcoin pairing. And what this means is this is how much Bitcoin you can buy with one XRP. Okay, XRP is a dollar 30 something or a dollar 17 today, I believe. So it's a dollar 17 each and Bitcoin is 50 or uh, $46,000 today. That means you can buy 0.00002594 Bitcoin with one XRP, which makes a lot of sense, right? So, oh, look at this. Looks to us like we are currently resisting off of the 2020 open. Interesting, right? Almost like this stuff works pretty well. All right. Now on here, we do the exact same thing. We're looking for breakers. We're going to look for our, our monthly opens, and then we're going to going on now so the first one i do is right here your august open right one thing about the way that i trade is i always do the same time the same way every time it's systematic logical and consistent. a lot of people ask me why i'm so successful in what i do is because i follow the exact same thing every time and i ignore all of the extra stuff that's going on august i'm going to go ahead and annotate july and then i'm going to go ahead and stop on the opens and let's look at the overall chart. Are there any breakers on here that I think are significant? Well, I think this one right here has a lot of significant. You guys see why? A massive drop in price, a, uh, a reversal in price or a fight back or a continuation downward. Okay, I think that's a significant level. Sure. Um, That's probably about it, honestly. I don't see too much more that makes that much sense, that has that much significance. I think up here probably has a lot. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of confluence right here. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and not not annotate that one. I don't think that one's that important. Yeah, I think we're good. So let's look at the overall profile, right? The volume profile. Well, had a lot of volume on the increase, this higher downcrease, we had a very low amount of volume. And now that we're starting to get a lot of volatility in the market, there's a lot more volume. That's a good sign for us. That means people are starting to take interest in XRP. I like the volume increasing on this chart with the weekly. So on the weekly, we're the exact same thing, guys. Here, annotate the weekly open. And if I'm going too fast, make sure to rewind it and check it again, guys. I don't want to go too slow. I want to make sure you guys have all of this annotated on your chart. It is very, very important to have all this. Okay, that's the last weekly open. I think that's good. I think I'm good with the weekly open. All right, awesome. So once again, what breakers do we have? Let's look at the volume profile, see if there's anything else on here. Um, it's right here. This is significant. Well, I don't know if I want to annotate that. I think it's too far away. I don't really see that many weekly breakers either. This might be. Let me go ahead and disregard it though. I think this monthly breaker is just basically keeping our price low. So this monthly breaker seems like what it's doing. It's actually holding the price down so it doesn't go any higher. And it once again is done again in the last week. But if we get above this level, we have a lot of open skies, don't we? 
Yes, we do, guys. All right, now this right here is significant. Really hard to localize. I'm going to go ahead and say this is my localization of this station structures. Breaker. All right. And this is something you need to make sure you're aware of. This is the weekly 200 moving average on the Bitcoin pairing. So if the price gets up to this level, you would expect it to be a, a major level of contention. So I'm going to go ahead and annotate here. Weekly 100 moving average. Just so no matter what chart I'm on, it's always clear where the 200 moving average in the weekly is at. I right, hope that makes sense. So now let's look at the 200 moving average on the daily, right? Something we talked about on the other one. And let's see where we're at right now in the 200. Well, we were interacting with it, interacting with it. But just recently, it looks like we have bounced off of it, bounced off of it, bounced off of it, and started the upside. Perfect. That's what we want to see. So the 200 moving average has been acting as a major support level. And we are now up from it. And that's very fantastic. Love seeing that. Um, Let's see what else, what else, what else? From the daily, let's see if we have anything else specific. Not really too much, honestly. I do like this. So we have this level right here. If we come down into this level, I think it'd be a major, major support level. So I'm going to go into annotate that. Daily breakers. Um, and maybe this. I think I actually like this. A little bit hesitant on this one, but I think it makes sense. The reason why is because we came up here and retested it. It looks like it tried to retest it, didn't go way down there, reversed, came up here, rejected originally at this level, and now we've gotten back above it. So is it that is it that unrealistic for it to come down here and retest it? If it does retest it, should that act as a major support level? Yeah, I think it would. All right, so all of our daily levels have been done have our 200 moving average on the weekly annotated. So we have our resistance level set. Anything else out there? Okay. Go back to the three. I didn't touch the three day yet, actually. Three day level, anything else significant? Uh, we do have some, but overall, nothing too significant. I like this one right here. For the weekly again. Significant. Yep. This this one. Very, very important one actually. Why is it so significant? Look at the interaction, right? So drop in price, the area it fought back, continuation down. But what happened to it? Came up here and tested it. Tested it. Tested it. Tested it. Tested it for a mass drop the downside. Okay. So this act is a very major resistance and did not let the price get back above it. So this was no, like obviously the very, very important level that just the price could not get back above. So if our price gets back up there again, what do you think is going to happen? Should be a real pain in the butt to get back above here again. All right. All right. So I think we're basically done with this chart, guys. So now we have these two charts that are laid out. I hope you guys have annotated all these different things on here. So now we drew all these lines and boxes and stuff on here. We do now, right? Well, these are our major support and resistance levels that we've annotated from a very, very high time frame down to the daily level. That means that these levels are going to be significant no matter what phase of the crypto market that we are at. So if you ever have a question, is it bullish or is it bearish? This will tell you whether or not support or resistance is nearby, right? You ever heard the expression, you buy at support and you sell at resistance? Yeah, right? Well, now you have your clearly laid out supports and resistances for XRP. Let's go to XRP, the US dollar pairing, and let's look at this. So if we get, so let's say we come down into this massive consolidation of clusters, right? Should you be buying or selling? I'd be buying, just like right here. You see how this, this overlap between these two breakers has actually supported the price. This was a, a very obvious buy signal to the market. So this would have been a good opportunity. If you come up here to this four hour breaker level, what should you do? All right? Let's say it does something like this. Here, what should you do? You should sell. 
Why? Because this should act as a resistance level, right? So it should do something like that. Now, if it comes up here again and gets above it, and it comes back down, what should you do? You should buy. Reason why? Because this should now act as a major support level, as what was once a resistance, once it's been reclaimed, it should be a support level. Okay. Now, if you get back above here again, okay, let's say it holds a support, comes to the yearly open, what should you do? You should sell. Why? Because this is going to be a major resistance level because it's a yearly open. Right? And that's basically all we've got on this chart as far as major levels on the US dollar pairing. Right? So just like you've seen with uh, with uh, Cardona and um, Ethereum and lots of other ones, they've already busted through their all-time highs. And once you get above the 2018 yearly open, essentially, you're going to just go right through the all-time highs. That's all the resistances that really have left in this chart. Okay. Now, we'll talk about long-term resistances and finding resistance passes this in a second. But the important thing is understand how to play this chart. Okay, and I hope that makes sense. Now, um, all right, cool. I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the BTC pairing, explain how to do that as well. Oh, so on the BTC pairing, let's look at this sucker. And we have our breaker established. So let's say we have an opportunity and it drops down here to uh, in this level. What should you do? should buy it, right? Because you are in a uh, daily breaker level that should act as a support level, okay? However, let's say you come back up here and uh, touch the 2020 open or the weekly open. What should you do? Sell. Why? Because these are all resistance levels, including this massive monthly level, right? So these are all sell opportunities, okay? Now, let's say you get above here. What happens now? Well, it comes back in here for a retest. You should buy back in again right that makes sense to me and then whenever it gets back above it okay that's another buy right because it's showing strength that means the market is showing strength now let's say you keep going up and it comes up in here to the 200 moving average in the weekly what should you do sell less in the position why because it should act as a major a major resistance level okay but once again let's say this let's say this happens Let's say it falls back down into here. What should you do at this level? You should buy again, right? Because this should still act as a support. However, let's say we come down here and we lose it. Come back in here again. What do you do now? You sell, right? Because now that support is acting as a major resistance level. Okay. I'm telling you guys, this sounds so stupid and so easy, but I promise you, it is this easy. All right, people really, really overcomplicate this stuff way more than they should. So you buy a support and sell at weakness, or you buy a support, sell at resistance. This is exactly what it's talking about, guys. So um, now, um, as you guys can see, there's a lot of resistance levels I've laid out. How much position am I going to unload on each at each level? Well, we've already talked about. This right here is my major level, okay? I do not expect it to get above here. I just don't. Could it? Absolutely. However, I will absolutely unload at least most of my position at this, okay? I'll probably take off maybe 20% here at this monthly breaker, 20% at this weekly breaker, 20% or like 10% at the weekly two average, percent here, okay? Does that make sense? And anytime you get a retest from the upside, I'm going to buy back a little piece of my position. I'm never going to all in buy or all in sell at any spots. All I'm doing is just slightly adding or lessening my position, okay? And now this is the XRP BTC pairing, right? So what does that mean? Does this, what price levels is this on the US dollar pairing? Well, it depends upon what price Bitcoin's at, right? So if Bitcoin is at 200,000 when we're up here, that may be close to like, you know, $10 for an XRP. If Bitcoin's at, you know, uh, $20,000 and XRP's up here, this may only be like $2 XRP. It just depends upon what's going on with it at the time. So you can trade on a lot of exchanges on the BTC pairing and it will make it a lot easier. However, another thing that you can do, go right over here. Like, let's say I'm gonna sell 20, 200 moving average. I go to the alerts, I go to my alert, pop it up, go to message. I'm gonna put on here, sell 10% uh, XRP weekly, 200 moving average. 
So what that means is whenever it gets to this point, I will get a notification from TradingView that's going to say, hey, we are about to hit the weekly 200 moving average and you've already decided you're going to sell 10%. So what I do is I go on to, I go on to my exchange and I instantly sell 10% of my XRP, right? Because no matter what the price is at the time, I know the ratio is at the 200 moving average and this is going to act as a major support level or a resistance level, right? So I hope that makes sense, guys. So don't stress about targets when you're looking at these markets. All you got to do is play level to level, okay? And if you do that, you will have a tremendous, tremendously more success than you would if uh, you were doing it in any other manner, all right? So don't worry about the overall price targets. Not only that, if you do have an overall price target in your mind, you're usually going to sell too late or you're going to sell too early because your price target isn't high enough or you're going to sell way too or you're never going to sell at all because your price targets are way too high. So instead, just wait and play the market as it gives you. Okay? So don't really try to catch the tops or bottoms. Just see what happens with the market and and unload your position when you get there. So um, that's about all I have on this video. Um, overall, the market looks really, really good. And I'm going to put a card above my head going over why I think the market is extremely bullish right now. And I also highly encourage you guys to join my Discord group because I post all the time in there and I want to keep you guys up to date on what's going on. And XRP is my largest holding. So if you don't think I'm going to keep you guys up to date on what's going on with XRP, are out of your mind i will make sure you guys have all the most recent or the most current information where the buy points are where the sell points are and uh discord is the place you need to be to get the most up-to-date information because it's always a delay in youtube right so outside of that have a fantastic evening and i will see you guys in the next video this is boys